Hello, my name is Charlotte and I love all things craft and zero waste. And today I wanted to do a video on what I have been up to recently. It's been some time since my last video of what have I been up to, I think about three weeks, uh, mainly because, well, I've been away for about 10 days and yeah, that's it really. So yeah, it's going to be quite a lot of things, like three weeks worth of makes really that I'm going to show you. There's uh, a bunch of crochet, some painting and what else? Yeah, some more crochet. <laughs> well, I'm going to start with, yes. I have been I have been really into crocheting baby things um, because I have I have a young nephew and a niece and I guess they inspire me. It's, I found it quite fun to make baby things because they're small they're small projects so they're kind of done quite fast and there's a lot of cute crochet knit baby patterns around. There's also yeah that's it really and it's just it's just fun. So the first thing I made was a dribble bib um, from knowing my nephew, like they dribble nonstop. He's around two years old and I have, I've seen the value of wearing constantly a bib just to catch all the saliva. Anyway, um, so I made this and yes, it's a more decorative dribble bib than like a functional one. I think you'd be like the more thick kind of, Felty fabric would probably be a bit more absorbent, but this is kind of a, the best of both. It's kind of pretty and it will catch some dribble as well. Um, so yeah, it actually, it looks massive and pretty much fits me. I haven't tried it on the baby yet. I thought I was just going to save it. I don't think he really needs it. I'll just save it for a future occasion. I don't know. I have two of them actually. I made two. So I bought this yarn because I really liked the colour of it and I was going to make some stuff out of it and I, yeah, I got two of these out of it. I found the pattern, I'll see if I can link it, but it was a, in Spanish, it was a YouTube video, free pattern, and it was a kind of a follow along and, but she was Spanish, so I kind of had to translate a little bit, but it was easy enough to kind of get it. I really like the way it curves upwards. So you actually are knitting, you are crocheting pretty much like a, a half circle is what it is actually. It's more of a half circle. And then you do the neck bit, so the ties and then around the neck. And the neck part you do quite, quite tightly. So like you'd only do a couple crochet stitches for like the length of it. And then that kind of pulls it more like this. And then with the blocking, when you block it, it kind of starts to lie quite flat and then it turned out really nicely. So I made two of them and then I had pretty much another whole ball left because I bought two of these, two balls of I think 100 grams. And then I found a pattern for a bonnet, a baby bonnet. And I thought it was really cute. There were a couple of patterns and I chose this one because it was kind of, I didn't want it too elaborate. There are a lot of really like fluffy elaborate ones. This one just has like some like detailing, like V thing. It's you can't really see it to be honest. Um, but I thought it was cute enough, and I like matching set stuff. So it looks, it feels like it's massive for for a baby because it actually almost fits me. Like I think it actually looks quite good on me. <laughs> um, it feels massive, but I think baby's heads are big, and my sister said that. Like, it seems a decent size for a baby, so whatever. Uh, so I made this, which I thought was really cute. So I'm just going to start a collection of like knitted, crocheted baby things. Um, I made some other bibs, some other dribble bibs the other week uh, as well, which was in a pinky colour, which was less like, less pretty than this one. It was more of a triangle shape. I don't know if I showed it to you in the video, but... Um, yeah, I'm going to basically start like a big collection for when, if and when I one day have kids myself. Then I also, when I went out to buy this yarn and I, I don't buy yarn often because I always try to use up what I have and I always have like bits, but I wanted to crochet a bit. So I bought some yarn and I bought this like really nice pink, like a, I don't know what you call it, dull pink color. 
I make this. Again, uh, did I have a pattern? Yeah, there was a pattern. I had a pattern. Yes, I had a pattern. No, I didn't. I had a picture. I saw a, Pinterest, a picture on Pinterest and I just reverse engineered it. I just like zoom, zoomed in to the picture and like tried to recreate it actually. Yeah, that's what I did. I didn't actually have a pattern officially, but I thought it was easy enough because it was pretty much a, just a square, granny square type thing, two granny squares, and then th three half squares, like that, you know, what do you call it? Three triangles, so that's just half of the granny square. So I pretty much just made that, that was simple enough, and then I sewed it together, and then I started making the bottom bit, and that was simple enough. I think it's all, double crochets, US double crochets. And then I just made the ends. So the end, it's just a tie end and the, yeah, and the shoulder straps. I'll put a picture in of me wearing it, but yeah, it's, it's pretty good. So, I mean, as always, things would fit better if I was less flat chested because it would like help fill it out. But yeah, it fits pretty well. I had to like adjust a little bit the strap join here. So initially it joined here because I have less like padding. I made it like a, I kind of sewed up the join up here so that it would fit more snugly around me. Same thing here because it would like be a bit loose. But overall, I think it looks pretty nice. And you just do a little tie little tie at the back great for summer um yeah so i'm pretty happy with it i think it looks really pretty cool this took like a lot longer than the bibs obviously because there's a lot more and i think this was the full like two balls 200 grams i think um yeah happy with that then the third thing which this was more of a zero waste project because I had some, I was using up my yarn and I had this like dark red kind of chunky-ish um, fabric, or not fabric, yarn. And I've had this like green twine, like uh, just a complete ball of green twine that I bought once, just, I don't know why, and I never used it. So I thought what I would make, it's like a rose vine thing. How cute is that? I think I'm still gonna make some leaves for these last two. There's like one smaller one because I ran out of the red yarn. Like I, I basically use up all the red yarn, which is great. So I made first these roses. I found like a random pattern online for the roses. And then I also found a separate pattern for like leaves. And this is with the twine. So it's quite a rough texture. And then I just created like a long vine, single crochet type thing and joined everything together. So I think I'm going to wrap this round like maybe at something. I'll see where I, I'll put it, but yeah, I think it looks quite nice. I still need to do like, I still want to do some blocking of, of the leaves so they kind of lie a bit more flat, but I'll do that after I finished these rest of the two leaves. I'll try and finish that today so I can finish this project. But yeah, that was a leftover project. I'm quite happy about that. I'll show you where I end up putting it, viewing it. But this was simple and you can just find some, some free patterns for flowers and, and leaves and then you can, and it's pretty easy to do, a pretty easy project. The next thing I'm going to skip crochet because I have one more crochet, but I'm gonna first skip that one and talk about a painting thing I did. So I recently saw on Instagram this artist, um, it was like an Australian Aboriginal inspired artist. Yes, I might have copied a little bit, but you know, I'm just doing it for myself. So I really liked the paintings that she had uh, and they're all, it's like this dot work. I don't know the Aboriginal, I don't know much about the Australian uh, history, but they had all these paintings that like are like dots. 
and I thought like the whole effect looked really good. And I wanted to like, they have, she made these like massive paintings like that goes like this and the whole thing was like all dots and like in these rainbow cut shapes. I thought it was really nice and all these different colors and I wanted to make like one. And I think it works really well. Like the bigger you go, like it's like really quite a vision. But I'm gonna, I said I was gonna start small. So I made a square version of it a smaller version of it here. Um, I don't know which way up it is. I think this way up. Um, so yeah, I made this square version and you can experiment with whatever colors you want. It's not perfect. Like I changed, for whatever reason, I changed color on this line, which I should probably like refill into the more yellow color. But I think it kind of looks really cool. And uh, like imagine this in like blown up scale. Oh, I think it would look awesome. And to be honest, it's good I did this. I don't know if I'm going to do the big version, but I'm happy I did at least a small practice one because I kind of figured out midway through how best to make the dots. So at the beginning, which is I started here, I was kind of painting the dots like with a tiny paintbrush. And it was like, you know, you don't get perfect dot shapes or like it's harder. And then up here, you know, pretty much up here, that's when I just decided to use like the end, the other end of the paintbrush or like some small thing and use more paint as well because I'm generally quite frugal with my paint but like you, you have to really dollop it on, a nice dollop, put, put it on the paper and then lift it up and then you will, it will like have this pointy, like it's very spiky if you run your hand over it because of all these like droplet shaped paint balls. Um, but you don't really notice it from afar, but it's very spiky. Um, I don't know if I'll hang it or anything. It was kind of just a practice thing and just an itch I wanted to scratch in terms of me seeing it on Instagram. I'll link the artist as well here on the description. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a good exercise. I'm still gonna think about it for one and a bigger version. I don't really have a space to put it necessarily like the small or the big version but it was just fun to do a painting project uh, because I do much less of them nowadays yeah and it's just a board it's a canvas board it's not a like a canvas frame then my last project is another zero waste project um, and that is well I have let me show you something so I really love making baskets. I, don't, I think that one can never have too many baskets. And I have been, in the past, I've made these crochet baskets um, out of t-shirt yarn. And t-shirt yarn is basically just cut up t-shirts that you can buy and it's, it's thicker or like it's more sturdy. So it does well as a basket because it will hold its shape better. So I made this basket like a, couple, a year or a couple of years ago and I made two in this gray and it looks really nice. So this is actually housing my, it's my COVID basket. It's just a couple of masks and some test kits. You know, I have, a, I have another identical basket that houses the other like first aid stuff, but this one was the overflow. So I just put COVID stuff in it. But yeah, this is T-shirt yarn and it works really well. And I love it. And I love put, like, you know, filling my cupboard with baskets to put things in and like containment type thing. Um, but I didn't want to keep buying t-shirt yarn because I don't want to buy stuff. Like maybe I can repurpose old t-shirts instead of throwing them out. Um, less so, I think men's t-shirts works better because they're more like standard shape, size, uh, cotton, uh, material, and then you can cut them up. So my partner has a lot of t-shirts. I haven't really, he hasn't really given me any, but I then extended the t-shirt idea to socks because it's not quite the same because I think there's more elastic in socks and like it's a bit bit worse in general but um, my partner had like has loads of socks he has way more socks than I do like I have maybe I have two little socks but at some point last year he wanted to throw away a bunch and there were all these like I don't know, coloured socks, purple, blue, whatever, like normal socks. And I said, don't throw them away. He, he doesn't, he like, 
I know, I thought he was throwing away prematurely because they were still fine, but he had so many socks that he's just like, oh, I don't need these because I don't wear them. So you can't donate them because they're old socks, right? So I was like, look, I'll wear them because, you know, I could do with more socks. So I started wearing his socks. I took on like, you know, 10 of his socks, purple, blue, green. So I've been wearing men's socks for like a while, especially in the winter, right? Um, but I already like to dress colourful and to be honest, I do think it makes me look a bit more like a clown than I want. Um, I like colours and patterns, but then, but I don't style very well. I don't match everything. Like I find it so cumbersome and so tiring to like make sure that your shoes and your socks and your dress or whatever all matches. It's just such a faff. So I end up often putting together things and then it looks a bit clowny, especially with these socks. It was just giving too many vibes. But I've been wearing for them, them for a year and I've been thinking, okay, I have been wearing it now. Maybe it's time to let them go. You'll have to throw them away though. And then I thought, well, I could cut them up into squares and use it as fabric, as pillow stuffing, like I've been doing with other clothes. Like I've been cutting them up and using them as pillow stuffing. But then I thought, actually, it could work as like sock yarn, like the t-shirt yarn. I could make baskets out of it, especially um, the the in covered baskets that you won't see anyway they're not on display like i quite like the look of this that could be on display but like everything gets tucked away anyway so <sighs> this is what i did so i've been cutting up all of the socks and you can see some of the colors right there's a lot of purple green blue all that and it's like all mixed with the, like black um, and actually it works quite well because you just cut like, a, you start from the opening of the sock and you just start cutting like a strip and you just go in a spiral all the way down to the toe and then you have actually quite a long piece of sock yarn and then you just tie all the ends together in a, in a string and then you can, and then you have your ball of yarn and it works really well. Um, so yeah, I did that. I mean, it is quite tiring to cut everything up, but you know, you just do that in the evening watching TV. And then you've got this sock yarn. And I've started making the basket. This is actually from different pairs of socks that I had, I think. Um, I think actually this sock, is, this sock is from my dad. He had a hole in it and he wanted to chuck it. And I was like, just give it to me. I'll, I'll make a basket out of it. So I started with his and then this is like a fluffy sock I had. Anyway, this is the beginning of the basket. It's pretty sturdy already. It's like, it's going to be a good good size, good shape basket. I'm going to try and make the same pattern as this. So just start with the square at the bottom and then come around. And yeah, I don't know how many socks it will require, but probably a lot. Um, so I've just cut this up. I'm going to start attaching, crocheting it onto the basket and we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I'm really happy with it. I'll, if I have t-shirt, I don't know if I'll stick to only socks for this and make it like a sock, sock exclusive basket or if I do have a couple of old t-shirts or my partner has some, I'll like mix and match. Maybe I'll make like the t-shirt basket, the sock basket, and make it like, like that. It's going to be diff lots of different colours. I'm not sure how it will turn out. It's not going to be a visual basket. I know that. But hopefully it won't be like ugh, too horrendously ugly that I can actually use it and, and make something useful out of it. So that's my Zero Waste project. Anyway, that was all I wanted to show. Um, in terms of things I'm going to be making in the next week or so, well, I have, I have identified a knitting pattern, a jumper. I want to knit myself a jumper and I've bought a whole bunch of yarn for it actually. Um, it's this like mint green colour. It's from Knit King, the King Cole, is it King Cole? Something like that, the yarn company, but cotton only. Like it's all only would buy cotton or wool. Um, so I bought like eight, seven or eight balls of that and I'm going to be making a jumper for myself. Um, I know it's the middle of summer, but I don't know how long it'll take and I might finish it right in time for the winter. So that's what I'm going to be working on. Um, I'm going to be doing a couple of sewing projects as well in the next week. I want to do some clothing alterations, so shorten the skirt and my sister wanted me to like hem some of her trousers as well, like make them shorter hems. And that's, I think all I have in my roadmap. There's probably some more, I was probably gonna have 
other things I'm going to be doing, but we'll see next week what I've been up to. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've liked looking at the things I've been getting up to. This is like three works, three weeks worth of, of crocheting. I did a lot while I was away. I, I brought with me all the dribble stuff and this thing. So I've been working on that in the last week. And then the rest of it was just like here and there. Um, I've been doing a lot of organizing as well in my house. I've just been loving containing everything. Anyway, um, thanks for watching and see you next time.